Yeah, I've I've found this a, a really important um, session and and a lot of really important voices that um, need to be much more central in the the decision making that that makes and shapes cities. Um, maybe just to start with a couple of acknowledgements that again for a lot of people in this session today are, are not going to be anything new. Um, you know, we speak today and you read the newspaper and hear a lot about a housing crisis and it's presented as something that's new. Uh, but what we've heard today, of course, is that, you know, we've been in a housing crisis for at least 30 years, right? Um, particularly since the, the federal and provincial governments got out of the business of building new affordable housing and downloaded much of that responsibility to the level of government least equipped to deal with it, which is the local level. Um, we talk about affordable housing today in broader terms because there's a lot of people who never would have dreamed that they would be victims of a housing crisis that now are, right? It has grown so much, but we have to remember that this is a long-standing crisis. And when we think of solutions, we have to include the voices of people who've been experiencing that crisis for, for many, many years. It's also important to acknowledge that while we speak of a housing crisis today, for many in our broader community, this isn't a crisis, but it's an opportunity to profit from a market that is yielding fantastic results uh, and a market built on both speculation and exploitation. When we think about solutions, we, you know, we always think of here in Waterloo, we're an innovative region, we like to think of ideas, but if you actually look at what, you know, the stu studies and what things have been proven elsewhere, it's not a question of figuring out what to do. It's not a question of how do we you know, find solutions. It's a question of how do we implement the solutions that we already have, right? It's a political question. It's not a technical or an imagine, you know, an imagination or a, uh, ideas question. And these are things, again, like rent controls, right? Including end of tenancy rent controls to discourage rent eviction, using publicly owned land to build non-affordable or non-market housing, funding the construction of new uh, social housing, uh, things to discourage speculation, like empty home taxes, vacation home taxes, second home taxes, enforcing property standards, bylaw enforcement, tenants' rights, and then, of course, other things uh, outside of the realm of housing, like a living wage, and we've heard examples of how ODSP and OW rates um, are too low to allow people to live with dignity, right? So I really like the question that Alex posed earlier in terms of how can we design, how can we include voices of lived experience of homelessness in designing solutions and for me you know I'm an, I, I teach urban planning and you know planning if you look at it critically is inherently about power and those who have power in a planning system can do things like preserve an old building because of its aesthetic value regardless of what it's used for or regardless of what that site could be used for so if we're going to see transformative change that addresses the structural issues we've been talking about today, uh, poverty, homelessness, racism, injustice, we need to see a shift in power relations that govern our cities. So listening is an incredibly important part of that process. And, and you know, we've had lots of people today who've shared some incredibly powerful stories and people who are in positions of power who are at this session who have listened. But listening is ultimately just a first step. Because after we've listened, we have to think about what is necessary in order to make those voices not just listened to, but actually central in the decision making process. And so it's less about how do we take these comments into consideration, right? How do we take this knowledge and say, okay, well, you've told us something, we've listened, how can we do something about it as the people at that decision-making table. But actually we have to think about questions of who's at that table, who decides who's at that table, who decides what roles people play, and even what that table looks like. Is it a table? Maybe not. Um, and so I think the next step, and you know, we've seen some very good progress in this region around things like building lived experience into affordable housing strategies. And in many ways, that's the easy part to put it down in a, in a report, to put it down in a policy. The challenge now is actually how to 
move beyond just talking or move beyond just listening, but actually reshaping those power relations so that people who have had less power in those decision-making rooms that make and shape cities, make and shape housing policy, have some people have more, which also means that some people need to have less of that power. And so my question, or maybe just my final reflection is, and this is why I really liked your, um, your comment earlier, Heather, you know, being involved in budgetary con con conversations is so important, right? Not just a consultation here, but maybe the, the thing to think about is like what needs to change or the people who've already shared so much with us today, what, what do they need to take those ideas that are already there and put them into action? What would empower what would enable, what would shift those power relations? So that's my thoughts. And, and thank you very much for everyone who, who shared so much today. It's been a really inspiring experience and, and listening to everything has been great. So thank you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, I really appreciate the fact that you asked if you could speak because you knew you had to go. And that was a wonderful summation which really helps me in this next part of this, uh, of the next 45 minutes, roughly. So